All right, guys, so look, you saw the intro. You know where we are going with this. This is going to be the first light. This is going to be the burn off of the Halo 1500 pellet grill. My name is Tommy, and of course, this is the Gallery Backyard Barbecue and Griddle. If this is your first time here, please consider to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you get notified every time the channel does a future upload. So this is going to be all about that first light and the proper procedure to burn off that Halo 1500 Prime Pellet Grill. There is a step or two extra that I always take, and this is probably my 20th or 30th one of these. And I have found out by doing this little extra step, you definitely can uh, save yourself a little bit of cleaning in the future. And of course, this Halo 1500 pellet grill may not ever see electricity, we shall see. This is a battery operated pellet grill that gets you between 15 and 20 hours of juice. So I am definitely intrigued by that. So look, here is what we are gonna need to do this, uh, to do the proper first light and burn off. We are gonna need a little bit of spray oil. Any towel will do. I wanna monitor the inside pit temperature to see how long it takes to stabilize. And of course, this we definitely don't need. Right now, what I wanna do, I've already got the battery inserted into the, uh, into the pellet grill. Let's start the uh, first light, the first startup procedure, and just go right into the burn off. All right, guys, I will take this step by step. And the first step is you're gonna to wanna to remove those two bottom grates. Then you are gonna disconnect your direct sear. That is gonna be your flare up control plate. Once you've done that, you're going to remove out that grease plate. Also take note as you remove that, you are going to have a top and bottom on that sear plate. That is going to help evenly distribute the uh, heat and also help to combat some flare ups. So I am interested to put that to test. Look how deep our burn pot is. You are looking at about eight inches down. And basically what I am doing here is you want to make sure no debris has fallen in there, no styrofoam. Once that is clear, you're going to open up the hopper. You've got twin augers in there. Again, make sure no styrofoam or anything is blocking the augers. Once all that is checked and cleared, you can fill both sides up with pellets. At that point, close the hopper because it is time to prime the unit and basically one press of the dial. Wait for all that to clear. Once you go solid, press it again and you want to filter by turning to the prime. Once you hit the prime there, you see it blink and press and hold and hold it till the first drops of pellet hit the fire pot. And I am telling you, it took about 10 seconds. Yeah. I've sped that up for you there, but once you start getting some smoke, basically this is an extra step. Get yourself some canned vegetable oil. I like to spray everything down. I do believe this helps in some rust and also helps in some cleaning of the pit. Once you've done that, you can get your grease catcher back in. From there, it is to reconnect that sear plate. By this point, you will be generating a lot of thick white smoke. That is perfectly normal. Get everything hooked up. Once those pellets ignite, that smoke will start to dissipate. And again, extra step here, spray everything down with that veggie oil. I am doing the grease catcher, the grates, the uh, tops and sides. About three minutes has gone by. I will get the uh, grates back on. We are smoking pretty good. And again, you will see the flame right about there. And again, once that flame uh, ignites, that smoke will dissipate rather quickly. Once that smoke starts to clear, you can shut the hood at that time. You wanna set the temperature of the uh, pit to 350 Fahrenheit, and you're gonna run it for 35, 40 minutes. Yeah. All right, guys, so look, a couple things to point out there was uh, on that prime function, after I uh, dropped the initial pellets in, 
on other pellet grills, you gotta prime it maybe sometimes four, five, six minutes before the pellets run through and start dropping in the fire pot. With this pellet grill here, it had to have been maybe five, 10 seconds. So I thought that was pretty interesting. It must be really, really close by, that is for sure. And also, you're gonna get some initial smoke. Just keep that hood open. That smoke will dissipate once the uh, fire pot ignites. And after it ignites and that smoke dissipates, then you can shut your hood, bring it up to temperature 350, and you wanna let that run for 30 minutes. So that is where we are at right now. I am just gonna let this run, and I'll bring you guys back in a bit. look so believe it or not that is going to conclude the show i mean i've like i've said i've done maybe 20 maybe 30 of these i mean who knows you lose count after a while and this one here is by far the easiest one that i did from the first uh, prime to the drop of the pellets it literally took maybe 10 seconds the ignition went pretty much right away it held temp right at that 350 360 370 she bounced a little bit, but I was definitely pleased with that. I gave you a little bit of a sneak peek. You heard those rumblers. Those pushed those pellets down into the, uh, into the auger, which uh, seemed to work well, I gotta say, man. A little bit loud, but other than that, definitely did what it was supposed to do. So look, if I knew this was gonna be this easy, I definitely would have planned a cook behind this. Um, this was one, two, three, man. It was, like I said, it was the easiest one I've ever done. The batteries seem to work no problem. I will get that in the house and juice it up because you could bet on my first cook on this pellet grill. We are gonna be doing the whole thing per battery, which brings me to the first cook. Leave down in the description what you wanna see cooked up. And please don't say brisket because that ain't gonna happen yet. Other than that, man, this was smooth sailing. I can't wait to fire this sucker up. And one other comment I gotta make, as you can see, we are in the uh, countdown process before it turns off completely. But this is by far the most quiet pellet grill that I've ever operated. Mm -hmm. 